Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to Inspired by Islam. My name is Isaac. Alhamdulillah, just like other weeks, mashallah, we have amazing guest in our show tonight. His name is Mark. He's a minister. He's a youth minister. And I've been working with him for a long, long time. And, and he's an amazing friend of the Muslim community, inshallah. So we want to find out that how he does his work and um, how he see uh, Muslim community in the UK. Uh, Mark, welcome to our show. Thank you very much, Isha. You know, I'm very honored that you, you made your time for us. Mm -hmm. And um, you've been working with Muslim community for a very long time. That's right. Yeah. And I've been knowing for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a lovely journey. Mm -hmm. So you, you work for FEAST. And uh, that's, that's the uh, organization, actually, where you use Muslim youth and, and Christian youth together. And you're trying to make it a, of course, understanding between themselves, to how to live together. So tell us about yourself and then we move on. Yeah, no, sure. Um, so I've been um, on a journey myself. I mean, I've been working um, as a youth minister for probably 20 years. And before that, I, I worked... When you say minister, it means a priest. It's yeah, a similar type. Yeah, right? I mean, so, okay. so basically, uh, my, my remit is to work with young people. Um, and I'm obviously part of the, of the church and part of the church leadership. So it, it doesn't exclude any um, group of people. Um, but I have a focus on working with young people just to support them uh, in discipling them. So in the way that um, a young person might embrace Christianity, it's, it's actually supporting them to, to actually follow, um, follow God, um, follow Isa, Jesus, uh, in a way um, that uh, they can learn more about him. Um, so, so my primary responsibility is really to kind of teach yeah, so when, you, when you're working with the young Muslims, mm -hmm. what do you see in them? What, what difference do you see in them than the other young, young ones? I'm sure it's more similar type in, in, in the... Um, <coughs> in many ways, the, the really good thing is that I can speak with a young Muslim um, and we have a connection straight away because, because they have an understanding of God in their world. Um, so in that respect, um, I find it often easier to talk to young Muslims who, who I think you know, are um, serious about their faith uh, they ask the sort of questions that uh, any young person would ask, um, except that um, if, if you don't have a faith, then, then you would exclude um, the creator from that conversation. You might ask questions, but with a, a young Muslim that, that definitely follows their faith, I would say that we have a, a real connection, often a better connection. Does it make you feel this, that they, they understand their religion? I'm not always, no, not always. Okay, by any so means. just like young people are you like a young people anyway, they're not. Exactly right. Um, they, they may be taught, um, um, but that doesn't mean to say that they actually understand. They will have questions that they perhaps don't always feel are being answered. And, and I think part of about um, faith for me is that um, it's about asking questions. It's about e expressing doubts as much as um, about things that you believe and trust in. Um, so I think, I think it's really important that, that there is the freedom for the young person to ask questions. Now, I know that can be quite threatening um, to, to others that uh, feel more certain, but I think that, for me, that is actually part of, of, of growing. Yeah, I think we need to answer mm. them. As, as, mm. as a community activist mm -hmm. and, 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 and mm. in our age, I mm -hmm. think we need to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Actually, if we don't, they will be confused. Course. They have a right to ask any questions. Where yeah. is God coming from? Who created God? You know, this kind of yeah. question a young yeah. mind usually asks. Yeah. And we need to have an answer for them. Mm. If we don't, that means we are hiding away from the actual, what do I nearly believe? So how, Sure, sure. Now, that's a really good question. Do, so do they ask you stuff like that? Where is God coming from? Who created God? Uh, what was before God? Do uh, they of ask course, you know, uh, you know, if a young person has those questions in their mind, definitely. Um, and I think it's fair to say that... Um, I need to be honest with them, and this is, this is my view, I take that from, from, from my perspective, that, that actually I don't have all the answers. There are huge questions I have uh, about um, understanding God, um, because God, in, in, for me, is, 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 is um, someone that is, is, at one level, unknowable. He, he's, he, I know him, I know he's, uh, you know, I've had um, part of his um, revelation given to me, but I don't think I know all about him because I am a created being. So in a sense, my, my journey um, it, you know, throughout life is about learning more about uh, my creator. Um, and so I think it's important to be honest about uh, what you don't know as much as what you do know. So, so, so when, you, when you work with uh, our, mm -hmm. our Christian young people, mm -hmm. so how, uh, what kind of question do they ask you? I mean, 
I know also the Muslim side, um, how do they, what kind of stuff they ask, the similar things or different? Um, in some ways there are quite uh, big questions. There, there are always questions around suffering uh, and ar around sort of like why life can be so confusing. But then I think that's part of growing up. I think that's part of uh, learning uh, who we are. And I think for many of us that is a struggle to understand who we genuinely are because I think we often hide from ourselves as much as from anybody else. And we're very good at putting masks on. Mm -hmm. So I think su suffering is definitely a big question. I think, you know, when you talk about um, the creation, almost inevitably there'll be questions around sort of like the, the big picture, you know, the universe and beyond, and, you know, the length of time that, you know, that our universe has been in being, and, and questions of, you know, uh, <coughs> I, I guess of, of, of life, you know. So it's, it's questions around... Um, what they don't know about as much as what they do. They're, they're, they're learning, they're growing, so. Um, um, how, wh what age do you work with? What's the age group? So I work with young people um, aged 11 to 19. I, I work with younger children as well. Would you, would you call them out of, uh, I don't know how many people you work mm. with, would you call that their, um, they understand religion means they uh, believers, would you say? Because there are big numbers of people, young mm. people actually, they're identifying themselves no, with no religion, to be honest. Well, yeah, that's a really good they question. Would say, they would say, my, that's my dad's faith, not mine. Yeah. How would you? Um, I, it depends from family to family. Uh, we have young people that obviously grow up in a, in a, in a faith community, in a Christian f community. So they will have uh, um, parents that, are, uh, that own the faith and profess the faith. And for us, it's not a given that just because they're in a Christian family that they will automatically um, embrace Christianity. Um, there will be those that, that uh, have um, parents that don't have faith or might have had uh, some understanding of faith in the past. Uh, and there are young people that are searching. There are young, many, many young people who don't always ask the questions, but you know that they're trying to understand life. Yeah, and, meaning. and maybe I've, I've been to a few, few mm. churches myself, just mm. to, uh, I've been there. Mm. Uh, but I, I don't see many young people there, to be honest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't see many young people. Or mm. uh, I'm talking about young, young men or women. Mm. You will mm. find a lot of old people. Mm. Um, but that's not healthy for a, a big religion like... Uh, what can we do different for them? Um, that's a really good question. I, th I, I, I think um, there have been some arguments that you know, the, the, the church in the UK has, has been shrinking hugely. Um, but there are examples where, you know, the churches are growing. That's de definitely true. And there are more young people and children in those churches. And, and I think um, it comes back to what I heard but a little bit earlier. But would you call that? I know there are a lot of, lot of mm -hmm. new projects are coming mm -hmm. into the churches. Like mm -hmm. they've got a lot of projects in the, within that sure. church. The learning the, mm -hmm. and trainings, all mm -hmm. that stuff. But we actually, uh, it's more like a chocolate thing. You bring mm -hmm. people in, you're mm -hmm. going to do this course mm -hmm. or you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about God in it. So it's more like giving them the chocolate to come in and they, as soon as they get there mm -hmm. uh, and chocolate, they go away. Do you think they come back after that? Um, I'm but not do, sure. you think it, do you think yeah. it's working? That's, the, my, that's my idea. Is I'm, not sure, I'm not sure that's, um, that's, that's satisfi satisfying anybody. I, I, th I think, you know, definitely um, we have a part to play in, 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 in providing social justice. And, and, and projects that, that uh, support young people to, to grow and to understand their world around them. I think um, they will find out too quickly, or will be found out too quickly if we just use that approach. I think we have to be genuine. Um, it, it, you know, in Christianity, we talk about um, charisma. We talk about the, 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 the proclamation of, of the gospel message uh, about the good news uh, about God. And um, if, if we kind of just offer a social services type project, um, I think there's a failure in that. So I, I genuinely believe that when you work with a young person, you have to be working at different levels. And one of those levels has got to be a spiritual formation. It's got to be out asking the big questions of life, finding out about you know, whether or not they have any kind of faith, and, and uh, also just helping them to support them in that, to find ways to pray, to find ways to, to actually learn more about the God of the universe. Yeah, yeah. And I, that's I appreciate the work you do, amazing, do uh, with mm -hmm. the young people. It's more practical, mm -hmm. and it's more everything involved in it. Mm. And they come and they, they see you as, a, as an example as well mm. because you live your faith. Mm -hmm. and that's amazing. Um, mm. I remember we went out to Wembley to see the football together with it. Mm. See, you're not giving them, you're not restricting them mm. within the boundary of the church or, or, or the mosque and other things. You're mm. actually going out, bringing mm. your religion mm. out, and then you share the good news. That's, that's, that's really interesting for me. Mm. Um, 
because I don't know if it's a challenge for you, but you, because you're working with a Muslim uh, and, and Christian young people, their creed is different. Mm -hmm. Like we believe Isa Jesus, Isa Salam, Jesus is, mm -hmm. is, is not son of God, mm -hmm. but we mm -hmm. say he is, the, he is the prophet like mm -hmm. Abraham, Moses, mm -hmm. his name is Jesus, and, and Muhammad, they are, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are the um, prophets, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. link between the creator and the creation, they are the example for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, they are human examples, mm -hmm. because if they're not human, we say, that we can always have a school saying, oh, they're perfect because they're not humans. Mm -hmm. if, they, if they were angels, they would say, oh, they're angels, they could do anything you want, but mm -hmm. I'm human, mm -hmm. I can't mm -hmm. be like them. Mm -hmm. So God actually chose humans to, mm -hmm. to show us, look, he's human, he can do it, you could do it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. they do have special power just to prove they are mm -hmm. from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do they ask you a question like, um, Jesus is, uh, is man, he is born, he died, He's not God. Do they ask you a question like this? Yeah, sure. I mean, absolutely. I mean, if they're interested in, in you know, in, in the topic of religion, almost inevitably when I'm talking to Muslim young people, of course they will ask me about, about Jesus. And, you know, some of them will be, be uh, better understanding of, of, of Jesus, you know, and, and about what, what uh, perhaps Christianity teaches than others. It, it very much depends. It's a bit of a spectrum, to be perfectly honest. Uh, and I'm quite happy to sort of like, you know, to, to d d discuss, you know, uh, matters of faith with them. So when they ask about Jesus, you know, I will um, obviously talk to them about um, my Christian understanding. Um, and, and, you know, when we talk about sort of like Jesus being the Son of God, um, fundamentally what I need to say to them as a Christian is that we believe in one God. We talk about we, we believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Um, we're not talking about three, three gods at all. And I think that's, that's a real misconception. Uh, but it almost inevitably people are going to ask me those questions. And I'm very happy to sort of like, you know, talk about um, if you like, the personhood of Jesus, the, the Jesus that basically was one that was, was uh, amongst us, however long ago that was, over 2,000 years ago, that he walked this earth, that, that in a sense there was that relationship with other human beings and about um, ex explaining um, sort of like, I, I suppose, the way to life. Yeah, maybe mm. not another, I, I used to get confused well, mm -hmm. when people mm -hmm. used to say to me he's son of God, but we mm -hmm. don't say he's a physical son, do we? We don't say that there is no... Um, a male female interaction here so well we, it's not a physical one is well this is this is this is where, or is you know, it more we, like a title well we could we could talk about we could talk about this for hours really okay. you know in terms of you know theology but um, um my understanding of, of of jesus is that he he is both fully god and fully man and that almost inevitably um brings people on onto the question well how can that be um i don't believe there's any duality in, in, in the person of god i don't believe that you can kind of like say right okay god's over here and uh, you know, and, and everything else is separate. I, I think there is an integrity, um, as I understand it, about uh, about uh, Jesus. So whenever I, I look at Jesus, I see the characteristics of, of the God that I worship. Um, and so there is no sort of like, if you like, no uh, hypocrisy in that. There is no. Um, that it, it feels like a paradox, um, that's, uh, but actually, um, it. it, it we, in, in one of the letters that we, we read, we read about the fact that he is the image of, you know, the living God. And that's something I know that, that, that as Muslims, you would find very difficult to understand and yeah, appreciate. I th but yeah, I think we, we, we're mm. more like a Jewish, uh, a Jewish belief, like mm -hmm. the God is uncreated. Mm. If God uh, is born, then how can he be he, he, yeah. something whatever bones he, he, he destroy so can God can God be born the bo whoever's the sure. creator he's more sure. powerful than the, the creation sure. so we say sure. just like a Jewish community they don't believe God is mm. created he's mm. uncreated he's everlasting yeah. Yeah. he's independent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he doesn't depend on anything so we say Jesus is depend on sleep food mm -hmm. uh, and all these things mm. uh, and, but this is our belief anyway mm. so we do have a differences here yeah okay. I mean one of the Psalms you know and this is one of the the psalms of you know of, of the Jewish people, which is Psalm eight, talks about um, you know the person being firstborn over all creation, and it's this whole idea about them having the highest rank. It doesn't mean uh, it's not talking about like you know a, a physical firstbornness, if you like, but actually that 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 character that is referred to in, in in the psalms there is is actually first in rank. 
Um, so, you know, Christian scholars would, would look at that and, and would say, you know, actually that has a reference to uh, one of the titles given to Jesus. So um, this, this is one of the differences between uh, Christians mm, and, and us mm, and the Jewish and mm, together. But they are mm, amazing stuff that we could go walk around. Mm, you know, we'll have differences. Yeah, yeah, we'll have differences. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah. I remember last few years we've been mm. doing iftar together. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Almost like every year we've done mm -hmm, it together. Mm -hmm. And show me, uh, if you could share your experience uh, when we do iftar, how is it for you? How could we increase and, and, and what the benefits of those things? I think the wonderful thing actually is, is being shown hospitality. Uh, that's what, something that I've been really, really impressed by and I think it's something that we all can learn. The very fact that when we meet together with people that, you know, that are different from us, that, that don't share the same faith, fundamentally what we're saying is there are, there are, there are things about the human condition which are the same. That actually you know, we, we are hospitable creatures. We were about welcome. And I, I think I, I've learned so much about the, the hospitality I've received that actually what it does is it, it compels me to say, well, that should be, that should be something I, I am doing mm. uh, on a regular basis. Um, whenever I welcome somebody um, in, in the name of God, um, that actually God is, is somehow present in that. So I think something like uh, if there is, is, is so fundamentally important, I think it is about welcome. It is about, it is, it is about sharing. Um, and so for me... Yeah, how do the young people take it? Because you've been there a few times. Yeah. Um, how do the young people take it when they come to the mosque and having food together and they're talking to openly, freely? You mm. know, they, they, it's, it's wonderful thing about young people is mm. they, they, they talk, they, they, can, talk, they, they yeah. speak their mind. They, and it's they, fine, they that's how you're supposed to be. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's really important because I, I think they see that as being, you know, a, a fundamental part of who we are. I think so too many young people don't necessarily get that, that feeling of hospitality and welcome in their own homes. That doesn't always happen. And so, so I, I think when we, when we invite people to, 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 to share, um, it, it makes a huge statement about, um, about who we are as human beings. And so, you know, that for me is really, really important. I think doing more sharing, more getting to know one another is so important. We can, we can talk about doing projects together. That's, that's fantastic. But ultimately, we, we need to be able to trust one another, um, you know, and we need to get to know one another personally. Um, you, know, you know, we all have a name and we all have a backstory. And I was, and I, I was listening to an interview you did a little bit earlier with, you know, a, a, a friend who's, who's yeah. become a Muslim. And what really struck me was that he talked about family. He talked about yeah. being part of a community. And so really, I think that's, that, that's fundamentally, as, as a Christian, that's what I believe, that we are part of God's family. You know, and therefore, when something when we come and share iftar together, um, what what we are doing is we are celebrating, um, you know, humanness. We are talking about you know what God has created. We're talking about um, you know conversation and about trust and about about learning to hope and and, and learning to to love one another, which I think is so important. Um, you've been um, with Feast. You've been mm. around different uh, um, cities of the UK, also mm. outside the UK. You've yeah, been absolutely. Other places, yeah. Middle East and other places. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you see? What kind of hope do you get by looking Muslims and Christians working together, yeah. and, and especially with the young people? Yeah, but they are the future. To be honest, they are their leaders in, of the future. So, what kind of hope you see that? We need to find a hope for them, mm. or we need to have find a hope for the for the universe. Don't really we we, we live here. We're going to live together. Mm. And let's have a, have a better life for everybody. So, mm. what do you see? Um, I, I'm hopeful in as much as um, if you could share some experience yeah. from your Middle East thing, I yeah, mean, that course. would be really yeah. interesting. Absolutely right. So, and you know, a few years ago, uh, actually, it was last year. I went over to the Middle East and I was involved in a conference there with the feast. And so we had. Um, Muslims and Christians together at a conference talking about ways in which we would be able to um, bring groups of young people together from Muslim and Christian backgrounds. Um, and what was really, really uh, wonderful about that conference was that as I was sharing with uh, different, different friends from different places, from, from Africa, from, from the Middle East, from further afield, wow. um, what was incredible about that was that actually we were um, in the same room, we were talking to one another, we were laughing together, we were you know, uh, thinking about serious ways that we could actually bring people together. Um, but the amazing thing about that was everybody had a different context. So the, the, the person from sort of Africa would have a very different context in which they would be looking to, to, to peacemake. And, and you know, where there are conflicts around the world, um, there are conflicts uh, you know, that we know that are described as religious wars. 
but in fact, you know, so, so often when we actually look behind the, the reality of those walls, we know that there are very different things going on. There are differences, uh, uh, there are issues of poverty and, and, and perhaps entitlement and, and so many things where people, you know, don't feel as if they, you know, they are valued or, or that they feel that they're, uh, you know, that, that they belong when in fact they do belong. And so in, those, in that com conference we met people there that, uh, that were trying to grapple with, okay, how do we bring people together? Yeah. How do we make peace? How do we recognise that you know that that, that uh, violence is just not the way? How do we recognise that you know that there are ways in which people can can respectfully be, you know understand that we have differences, but that we actually listen to one another and respect the other person? And and so really, I mean that was that's an, yet another springboard for us. In the UK context, we we do that. I mean you talked about the football earlier. Ishak. And the important thing is for those young people to be able to kind of, you know, have those conversations. Now, it's not always easy when we're watching a football match. Sometimes it'll have to be, you know, sort of, you know, other times when we're on the tree, yeah, yeah. when we're having those conversations. I think we need to do more work around that because sometimes we can do those individual one-offs and we need to think, well, how can we do that consistently? Um, but I, I'm, I'm encouraged. I mean, I, I think, you know, when a young person, when a young Muslim um, says to a young Christian, OK, this is what I believe, or can I ask you some questions? about your faith and for that person not to be a spokesperson for their faith but to say this is the reality for me. I think that's a really wonderful moment. When they, they, they say they don't understand something, can you explain? Um, I think that's a really, really uh, significant moment. When they're actually becoming friends together, uh, when they can actually feel as if they can talk to one another freely about something that is very important to them. That's fantastic. Yeah, we don't have sorry, we don't have much time no. left. Um, I think we all need to work hard because mm. I think we are we need to open our uh, the worship places. Like on third of March, we actually opening up yeah. about two hundred and fifty uh, mm. mosques in UK uh, for the public to come in, have tea, coffee, and ask whatever question they have. Yeah, absolutely. Things they see from the media mostly is misleading. Like people think that everybody is in that uh, mm. that mm. type. So I think we also could be the same uh, mm -hmm. in your place because last time we've been to your church you know you brought us lots of food and mm -hmm. it was a good mm -hmm. feast and it was, it was interesting really really mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. to see so what can we do this year what do you think we should do quickly one minute yeah of course I, I think we need to do more of that and we've started to talk with you know some of some of the friends that you brought to to that place and and I think it's really important to be able to open up the space so that other people can see other people can see sort of like you know what it is that we do in these spaces I, I think I think it's a challenge you talk about you know a mosque being community places churches should be about community places they should be spaces where people from other faiths can come and see and, and see what we do and ask questions so I would definitely encourage that you know, where we, you know, we can bring more groups together. Um, so I think that's one thing we can do. I'd love to be able to do more where we actually have some young people um, in the same room, um, if you like, grappling with issues of life that, like, they, that affect them as young people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think there are, there's real scope there to be able to say, right, let's get some groups together where we can kind of like share. And we talk about uh, the guidelines for dialogue, which I've, I've got here on the table today. I think it's about being able to sort of say, right, let's use these guidelines to actually have respectful conversations. And it's not only the young people, it's about the adults too, being genuine friends. And as you say, modelling um, that friendship that we have, that they in turn can do. And there is hope there for our younger definitely, generation. Definitely. Fun. I want to thank you for your giving us time today and, and it was amazing to have you. And I'd love to have you back again. Thank you, Ishak. Yeah, um, it's, it's a real privilege. Before you me, get yeah. too old. <laughs> before I get too old, yeah, I know. Brilliant. Jazakumullah <laughs> khair. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, thank you for watching our show and I'm sure you enjoyed. I think we need to open our doors, mosques and centres to our uh, neighbours and friends. They need to come and see what we do. Our amazing belief we have, we need to share it with people. And we also need to go to their place and see what they do. Mm -hmm. Amazing work is happening across the mm -hmm. other faith as well. So we, we live in this world, we want to be happy. And the only way we can be happy is that we respect others and, and then pray for them and do things together. So may Allah bless you and, and may Allah make everything easy for us. And I hope to see you next week, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.